four days at sea, and hundreds of miles offshore. This group of 25 fishermen, including myself, have one common goal, to catch the dozens of deep water fish found in the fruitful waters known as Pulley Ridge. Welcome aboard Florida's largest long range sport fishing boat, the American Patriot. What's going on guys, Victor here, and check it out. We are on this beautiful boat known as the American Patriot, and we are about to head hundreds of miles offshore to fish a really special area known as Pulley Ridge. We got Johnny from Johnny yes, Jigs, sir. and we got my best bud, Ryan Morey. These guys need no introduction, and this is a really special trip because we are going after some of the deepest species in Florida. I'm talking Snowy Grouper, Warsaw Grouper, Queen Snapper, crazy fish you might have never even heard of. It's one of my favorite trips of the year and I cannot wait to share it with you guys. We'll see you out there. Here we go Ooh. again, baby. That's That's I love it. I'll hold up for a second. You need any ice bun? So I will show you guys a little tour of the boat. Up here, we got the second story. More rods than a Bass Pro Shop right here. So this is a little downstairs area. Everyone's getting rigged up and everyone's got an assigned rail number. So like me and Ryan are R9 and 10, so this is our two rods right here. So this trip is really like divided into two kind of different anglers. Me and Ryan are gonna do both, but a lot of guys will exclusively jig. Some guys will jig and bait fish, but it's nice to change it up because a lot of times when the jig guys are on, the bait guys aren't and vice versa. So we brought both things. This is Will, drove all the way from North Carolina. This man never sleeps. Yo, never sleep. Can't sleep. You, you sleep when you're dead. Yep. Look at this organization. Look at that. This hooks, you know, doubles, singles, extras. Will, you did not bring enough tackle. All the all the jigs. You did <laughs> not bring enough tackle. All my jigs. 200 jigs in here. Yeah. So I got enough for the whole boat, man. We're in Florida. You guys know it is extremely hot. When you're sweating, you come in here, you get hit in the face with a bunch of ice cold AC. This is where we have dinner, hang out. If you get too tired or hot during the day, you come in here, chill in the AC. I think they got satellite TV, so some guys watch sports or whatever they want over there. There's literally no place I'd rather be on earth than 130, 140 miles out with Captain Jerry as the captain. This guy's the man. Um, deep dropping for these big grouper and, and uh, he puts us on favorite. fish. I've seen him put us on fish driving this thing like a center console. He's like, there's a spring of fresh water down there. Boom, he sets up, goes over it. We, we kill it. It's like, reel him up, and he resets on it like he's driving a center console. It's a big boat and a lot to handle, but it's a great boat. I've been here a little over a year on this boat, 15 years on the boat I was on before, and I enjoy this boat more. If they want to eat, we'll catch them. If they don't want to eat, we'll force feed them. <laughs> I like it. So this right here is the bunk room. This is where everyone sleeps, including the mates. They keep it ice cold in here, which is nice because when you're on a fishing trip, the last thing you want after sweating all day is to sleep in a hot place. You got your standard bunk rooms, two showers. The cool thing about this boat, they make their own fresh water. You could not possibly even run out because they're just making it all the time through reverse osmosis. First things first, you got Captain Jerry. He's up top right now. I'm your second, Captain Ian. Thank you to everybody who's here. It's been a year in the making. I'm, I think everybody literally booked this trip by the first week of September last year. You know, Bob, Take a look in here. We got Bonita chunks, Speedos, Spanish mackerel, Bonita herring. This whole thing full of bait ready for queen snappers, snowies, pretty much everything that lives down there. You guys heard that little safety briefing. So now we're gonna wait for dinner, get rigged up, get all the stuff situated, and we're gonna have an amazing time.
Look at this. Where else are you going to get a full salad bar on a boat while fishing in Florida? Tell me that. We're eating good, baby. I got feta, fettuccine Alfredo. Yeah, Ryan, I'm treating myself. I'm on a good boys trip, you know? You haven't eaten carbs in like three years. <laughs> so Chef Mike whipped up zucchini, squash, salad, chicken Alfredo, got some shrimp in there, the pasta, even making dessert. Soda machine on the boat. Ice cream machine on the boat. This is living large. single morning and evening this boat doesn't go very fast we only go about 10 knots to save on gas and because there's no rush so a lot of guys will actually troll in the back for wahoo and someone got one on and it took a lot of line this guy's been reeling for like the last 10 minutes Baby, there's nothing like that first drop. He's gonna be the first guy with the fish in the boat. Starting out manual, I did bring an electric jigging reel. So you're gonna see a lot of this this entire trip, just lifting the jig up and down, letting it flutter. And that's basically the whole premise of this. They think it's a falling squid, or as Johnny from Johnny Jig says, some space candy just flying on their heads. I'll jig it up like 10, 15 feet up off the bottom. Because a lot of times the fish are not directly on bottom, but they'll be a little suspended, especially the queen snapper. Get it up like 30 feet off the bottom and then drop it all the way back down. So this is our rotation. I cast up current. So that way, by the time I drift into my jig, I'm gonna be straight up and down with it. Everyone goes into the corner and then, I don't know, you jig until you start getting really close to the deep drop guys and then you basically do it all over again in just this one big loop and you got the exact same thing in the bow of the boat hooked up hooked up let's go i, got, I want you guys to understand something about this man right here this man caught a 150 pound swordfish on a jig absolutely wild probably one of what what do you think Vic? like one of a hundred people yeah. Done that? One of a hundred people probably has done that. No one does it on the jig because they don't think they can, but if more people did it, they would get them. Like a hundred percent. Yellow eye. Yellow eye snapper. First one of the trip, huh? There you go. Oh, that's not, that. Is that a yellow eye? Yeah. Yeah. New species. Yellow eye. New species on the jig. He's floating, which tells me it's the right species. He's got about 140 feet to go and that's what my electric reel is telling me here but I do enjoy reeling them up manually oh, shit. there we go guys yellow eye snapper definitely of the delicious species of fish one of my favorite to eat little gag grouper he's gonna have to go back on the descender out of season That'll take him down about 150 feet, drop him down, and he'll swim the rest of the way back. About what this entire system you guys are doing? Yeah, it's just a simple, everybody gets a number, you get assigned a number, you get a, a bunch of tags, you take zips, and when we get back to the dock, everybody finds their fish, takes them home for dinner. Dennis! Oh, you're right there. <laughs> All right, first fish for Vic. It's always disheartening when you see everyone else hooked up and you think, what am I doing wrong? Is, is my jig the wrong color? Is it the wrong size, the wrong profile? But I finally, ah. Oh. So what happens when you talk too much? You know what, my jig's gone. I got it cut off. Everyone's probably caught around one yellow eye between the bait guys and the jig guys. And that was my first fish that I actually had hooked up. But I think my, I don't know, I guess my just got cut off. 
days very young. These trips can go from zero to hero. You could look over the rail and every single rod will be hooked up. We go through flurries where it's like two hours non-stop hammering fish. And then you have times where it's three hours is just dead, you know? Thing, especially with these deep fish, a lot of it has to do with, Jerry says, the bait that's down there. They rely on sunlight. So I think that as the day goes on, the bite gets better and better and better. It's a clean cut. Nice, huh? <laughs> That's the biggest ham bone snapper I've ever seen. I thought it was yellow. I was a big one. Doubled up. Doubled, son. Yes, sir. Woo -hoo -hoo. Doubled up. All Hooked the up, baby. Jigs starting to get bites. That's what we like to see. Come that on. looks like the right flavor, Ryan. Yes. That looks like the right flavor. There we go. That's oh, nice scam. There we go. First drop with that jig. Look at that. I'm tight. Jigs are firing off. Yeah, oh, we'll oh. hook up. Right up a pot. Hooked up, baby. <laughs> we got about 130 feet. Looks like the fishing's going off. Right on the top, baby. Ooh, look at that, dude. Right behind you. Cheers. Doubled up, baby. We got Cheers. Twins, son. <laughs> I've pulled hook on three fish so far. Is it foul hooked yellow eye? It's a vermilion. Vermilion, put it back down, dude. Yeah, for real. Worse off eight. You gotta start somewhere, huh? Big first fish of the trip. Vermilion snapper. The deeper we go, the less of these guys we'll catch. Um, the more snowies we'll catch. Queens, every depth range has kind of a different species range. So we're starting out kind of shallow in like 600, or no, we're in like 400, 450, but the deeper we'll go, we'll get into some cooler species. Along with jigging, we're going to do some deep dropping. Three-way swivel, 60-pound fluoro, mustad circle hook, another three-way swivel, and then I got a little piece of eel. Now we wait and we just watch and stare at that rod tip for that little subtle tap. The Jamaican sensation! That's right. So how many times have you been on the American Patriot? Uh, this is my third time out here. Third time? Yes. And what's your best catch like so far? Uh, catch me a 40 pound gag grouper last year. Every time you go to a different area or a different depth, you got different species. So far, the only thing I've seen come up at this spot, we just moved to is blue line tilefish. Got him to the left of us, to the right of us. Hooked up on the hand crank. Yo, Kev. Yo. He said his day's over. No, it's not. You keep fishing. Yeah. There you go. All right. This a snowy grouper. Perfect timing for a lunch break. My arm started to cramp up hand cranking up at 800 feet. Definitely need some calories again. Earl was just ringing up that blue line tile and it's floating. You hear me talk about it all the time. When you bring these fish up from the deep, they can't compensate for the pressure change. That's why we pretty much keep everything. We're meat fishing, right? We're trying to feed the, uh, the family in the dinner table. If they get up far enough, they can't swim back down, so they'll end up floating, which is nice, because then you can just come up and gaff them and get them in the boat. Check what we got out in the bucket. Mark caught a live squid, and you already know we're dropping this thing down right there. So that is exactly what these fish are eating down there. The ocean is full of squid. Basically, anywhere you go in the world, you're going to find squid of different species. And what better way to match the hatch when the ocean gives you a nice present like this? Look at how sick that thing is. It's literally a live squid. We're going to drop him down. I hope he doesn't get eaten by like, I hope he doesn't get picked to shreds by a vermilion or something, but we got high hopes for that guy right there. I, I I had them on and they just pulled. Still fishing that big squid. A couple good bites and that's it. Oh, come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Nope. You're not hooked. Look at that little doink doink. Dude, look at the rock. It's right there. 
Oh, you're hooked up. Isn't it funny that I can be hooked up and walk over here and grab my camera? Yeah, we got it, we got it. I'm either stuck or have a fish, Dennis. Yeah. I'm stuck. No, it's stuck. Is it not? See, it was stuck. Unless it was wrapped around something and now I got it out. I'm pulling something up. It could be a rock, it could be a bunch of lines. That was that big squid. Fingers crossed we got something. It's an eel. That's why it was an eel wrapped around a rock. Sorry. Just wanted to give you more slack. Whoa, look at that thing. That's a wily animal right there. That thing will light you up. Give me my squid, buddy. Oh, he got the double. Oh, we, oh, we got the squid head back. So that's what happened. Eel was probably wrapped in a rock, got stuck, freed him up, and it was pretty much dead weight. Eels don't really fight that much. Second eel caught in the trip now. Uh, my third trip on the Patriot. Third? Yep, and in about a year, going again in September. And... Very nice. Thank you, thank you. Really Appreciate it. Nice. My favorite to too. Yeah? What's your go-to recipe? Uh, 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 lemon, garlic, and caper. That's not Nice one. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Or stay away from it. Yeah. 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 Got Asian chicken, beef pepper steak, little sushi. Ten points. Wow. Look at that on the jig. I gotta get him. I gotta get a picture. Right yeah. one. This, this breeze feels so is life, my friend. It doesn't get any better than this. You just gotta be in the right place at the right time. Boys, yeah. it's it's two rough. Trip, two trips ago, we had 52 of them. 52? Oh. Yes. Yikes. Two trips ago. Wow. Yeah. I had eight. I have <laughs> had a rough big? day. Uh, but you know what? I'm big, optimistic because yeah. tomorrow's a new day. And tonight is a new night. You can still they fish were all at night. Really, really nice. So here we got a ribbon fish. Let's see if it produces a warsaw for us. I'm just gonna go right through the head one time. Big Mustad 16 0 circle hook. Now we sit and wait a very, very long time. The last time we did this, I was here last year. Um, Ian and the other mates, they stayed up all night long when they caught a warsaw, but they hooked like three other sharks, and every time they would come down to the bunkhouse and wake us up. We would come out there to try to film it. And then finally, after the third time of waking us up, like 2 a.m., we got the Warsaw. What's going on? I'm putting in hours in the late night bite. Warsaw bait in the corner. Warsaw bait right there. Sharks are leaving us alone. Earl, my man who caught the big gag last time, he's clocking in on the night shift too, and he got himself two big yellow eyes. Right. You seeing this? There it is. Whoa! That's a good one right there. There's a good one. Oh! That's not a little fish right there. That one's, he's pulling drag. Yes, this could be the fish. This could be our fish. I don't want to be too aggressive because we haven't really been snagging bottoms, so I'd rather play them nice and easy. I don't want that hook to pull, you know? See, there's a finesse to everything, even with the electric stuff. Oh, it's a snapper. You see it floating back there. Can I get a gaff? Gaff, mate. Oh, oh my gosh, he got sharked. Holy smokes, that would have been big. No. Oh, man, that was a nice queen. Oh, half my queen's gone. Look at that. That's a queen. That was a nice queen. My, my first queen of the trip got sharks. That fish was gonna go 
probably close to 15 pounds right there. Look at that. That's why it was fighting so hard. It got sharked. It's a shame. An absolute shame. This is the secret right here. Speedo. Is that what you call Cotton pompano, on? yeah. Well, that's what I caught half the queen on. You have to vote filthy. This is the bluffin snapper. This is my favorite fish to eat. Nice, tender, white meat. Right here. Got him, Victor. Got him! There we go. Come on, don't get shark this time. So I'm letting my, um, normally when we fish a three-way swivel, it's fixed. I have a three-way swivel to where my leader is sliding through my weight. So since there's a lot of current, I'm constantly feeding my bait back, 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 back to get my bait away from that lead. And it seems to be what's getting the bites because we're getting all the big fish back here. I want to get him in as fast as possible. I do not want a shark. Huh? Yeah, it's full speed. It's a, a nice yellow eye, huh? Hambo? I saw a yellow eye. It's a yellow eye. There we go. Decent yellow eye for me for the trip. Such a pretty fish, and as you guys see, the name. The eye is indicative of the name. They got a jet yellow or like a highlighter yellow. Gorgeous dorsal fins, look at that. One photogenic fish right there. Come on, stay glued. Yep. You gotta feed it, feed it, feed it to them. Let them get real comfortable and then just full throttle. I'm gonna keep fishing for these things until they're done. I'm not really tired and I know I can sleep all night tomorrow night. Oh, there it is. oh no. Yeah, that's a yellow eye. What's oh, a hambo? Hambo? Yeah, black oh, yeah. He almost looks like something tried to eat him. Do you see how oh, scaled up he is? Uh, he actually just got grouper to put into the wreck. Look at that. I even got my bait back. I think all of us started around 9 a.m. And I can't lie, it was a rough day. Like, real rough. A lot of people came up empty handed. A lot of people just one or two fish. I think I had one or two fish. So I'm extra motivated to fish tonight. I should be downstairs getting sleep like everyone else. But you know, this is our only night to fish because tomorrow we fish all day and then the boat goes home Saturday into Sunday morning all night long. So I don't mind sacrificing a few Z's. I don't get to do a lot of deep dropping and some people might think it's boring but any new feat as a fisherman doesn't matter whether it's slow pitch jigging, sword fishing, getting dialed in, getting your tackle ready. That's why I like trips like this because you have mates and you got people guiding you but your success of your trip really comes down to your rigs, your rods, your reels, how long your leaders are. I mean we're the only two in the back of the boat that are catching these yellow eyes right now out of 30 anglers. Um, you really got to pay attention to the details and uh, yeah, it just feels good, you know? Yellow R. Number 19. That's Mr. Vic, number 19. I love this. And I got to fish my brand new reel, my brand new Colony rod. You guys can actually save some money. Use my code Landshark. Colony has been a sponsor on the channel for a very long time. All the OG subs know that. You guys can find the rods linked below. It's my brand new deep drop rod just for this trip. It's a big fish. Yes. Ain't a bad one, Dennis. Look you know how pretty that fish is. His little freckled yellow dorsal fin. I just reeled up my ribbon fish that we put out for the Warsaw. Come take a look. This is all that's left. So either a shark ate it or it just got chewed for a very long time and they just left the head, but I don't know. Dude, they look so big in the dark, in the water. Every fish down there, I don't, it's the light playing tricks on our eyes, but it looks like they're 15 pounds. I mean, I'm not complaining about catching this size fish. He's munching it. It's gonna be a shark. We got him, whatever he is, we got him. 
No, he let go again, didn't he? Just had a bite on the Warsaw rod. Ian looked like something was messing with his too. Mine kind of felt like a shark. It was like real erratic, heavy head shakes. Whereas Ian says the grouper will kind of just like sit on it and just go like a freight train. It's about 5 a.m. Your boy never went to sleep. We tried for the Kubera, or we tried for the Warsaw all night. As you can tell, I'm delirious. Probably caught six sharks. Um, but right now the black fins are chewing. Dennis was taking a nap downstairs, so I, you guys didn't see the first two fish, but I just caught two black fins on the jig. All I'm doing is casting it up current, letting it drift back. And all the fish that I've caught have just been on the fall. I'm not even having to jig it. The black fins are sitting like 100 feet under the boat. When we're anchored out here and there's this much light, flying fish and all this bait just kind of corrals around the boat. And I think the black fins sit underneath it and kind of use it as an ambush point to hunt. And a really popular thing to do on these boats is to jig for them at night especially. And just as quickly turned off, but... Oh, there it is! Nothing more fun than this. Ripping tunas with your boys at night. Look at that. He's peeling, Dennis. And it's nice to change it up because this whole trip has been all about the bottom fish, but being able to target pelagics on the jig, it's fast paced, they pull a lot of drag, and it's just exciting. And I think they sit here because of all the bait that congregates by the boat at night. If you look around, there's flying fish, there's little baby file fish, squid, all sorts of stuff. Hi, we are fishing right now. Dump him! Dump him! Come on, keep pulling, baby. Be a big. This this might be a big one, Dennis. I'm gonna play him nice and easy because I've been losing a lot of the blackfins to the boat, or I don't know. This is definitely a blackfin. I've never seen mahi at night. We've seen mahi floating around, triple tail. The porpoises come by the boat. Everything seems to be drawn to the lights by the boat because the lights draw the bait and then everything else follows it. Dude, charging, he's charging! Charging straight up. Not liking when they do that. I think he's getting chased by a shark or something. We've had our fair share of predators tonight, that is for sure. Oh, it's a real one. There we go. There's a nice black fin. I think he just got tail wrapped. That's why he was fighting so weird. Thank you, boys. Thank you, Tra Travis. All right, this is what I wanted to get you guys on video. I've never experienced this bite. I've always heard of people on the head boats and Pulley Ridge getting in the black fins at night, and I finally got to experience it for myself. Pretty dang cool, if you ask me. You know, when you think of tuna, you always think of them as daytime fish, but you see those big eyeballs right there? These guys are munching on squid out here at night. They got great eyesight. And uh, that Mustad Moonriser jig did the trick right there. You guys can actually save 20% off using my code Landshark. I'll have it linked below for you. Little Mustad Moonriser right there. Perfect little squid imitation. All right, guys, it is about 11 a.m. Me and Dennis went to sleep at sunrise. Fished all night because, number one, it's a lot cooler at night, and number two, you got the whole boat to yourself pretty much. Picked away at all those yellow eyes. Tried for the Warsaw. Right now we're jigging for Queen Snapper. I told Pete to come and get me if the Queens start firing off. And uh, I actually just pulled one off on the jig. So that's what we're starting the morning doing is jigging for some Queen Snapper. The boat's got a pretty decent amount right now. And it should just get better as the day goes on. The Captain Jerry, who's been doing this for decades now, says Queen Snapper love the light they love the sun so as the sun keeps peering up and up and up the queen should get more and more active <laughs> 70 feet Coming over with the gap for me right now. Look at that, Danny. 
Come on, dude! Yes, sir! <laughs> Take a look at that fish. Just incredible, man. Just some, this is the fish that we just love to land. Such a powerful fish. Pulls drag, fights all the way up. You know, you got a hope and a prayer that you land him when you do. It's just the excitement is, uh, I can't even explain it. Jig in, jig in, jig in. So I'm stopping my jig before it hits the bottom at like every hundred feet because these queen snapper are one bottom fish that will be suspended hundreds of feet off of the bottom. And I think that's the reason the jig eyes are getting them so much better than the bake eyes right now because the bake eyes are not able to fish their squid effectively mid water column. Yeah, on the bottom. There he is. Oh, me too. Oh, double. double, double. Come on. I'm good luck for you guys. Yes, Look at that. yes, I walk yes. Back here. I think I pulled that time. Really? Oh. Yeah, I need to. I need to fish too. Oh, come on. Yes. There it is. There it is. Wow. Yeah, they're they're suspended, guys. They're not on bottom. No. I'm gonna loosen my drag because I've been pulling these hooks. Dude, he's ripping mine. I love it, man. I love it. So if you guys don't know who this is, I introduced him earlier in the video. Johnny Stedham of Johnny Jigs. What's up, guys? Him, Chris, and Will, who are on the boat. They're the owners of Johnny Jigs. They put on this great trip for basically everyone, and it's a lot of work to set these trips up. They got a great slow pitch specialty shop in Pompano Beach which you guys should check out. I have a link below as well as a YouTube channel. You want to get into this sport? These are the guys for all things slow pitch digging. They live, breathe, and eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So go check them out. You're, you're getting all your gear together, tying leaders, buying setups, and everything that it takes to get out here and fish all for this moment right now. Yep. And if you think about it, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> But this Holy is Lord. like, this is the, like the, this is one of my dream fish in terms of slow pitch jigging. There's n no better tasting deep water fish for the snappers in my opinion. They fight so good. A lot of these deep water fish don't fight the whole way up. Queens fight every inch of the water. And going back to the electric part, like I was saying, I'll go back and forth from fighting them from manual to electric because I don't want to pull that hook. So if I feel like he's really tugging, I'll just go and fight him for manual for a little bit, you know? Really feel what he's doing. And then I'll give him a little robotic action, just like this. Together. together. I'm under you. You're under. Okay. Here, here, here. Okay. Go over me. Wow. Nice job, Mark. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're manual jigging? Holy smokes. Dude, that's a giant. Oh my gosh. Look at the squid coming Yeah. Dang, that might be last year's fish right there. I want you guys just to picture this. Two days at sea, 72 hours for fish like this, fish of a lifetime, right? You come out here, you get all your tackle prepared, like Johnny said, you're throwing these huge hunks of metal in 800 feet of water, just hoping that some crazy fish eats it. And you see the beauty that the ocean has to offer. You know this is a delicious fish. It's just amazing to me that these things live down here. The variety and diversity of fish in the ocean just never ceases to amaze me. I mean, look at the tail. There's a reason they're called Queen Snapper. They're just absolutely gorgeous. They look like these huge red goldfish. Massive pupils, indicative of that deep water, um, any deep water fish to allow a lot of light in. And look at that. What's hanging out of his mouth? That's a real Florida squid right there. That's not one of our baits. He spit that up. Because when they come up, their stomachs will actually blow up out of them because they can't compensate for that pressure change. And all of the food in their stomach will basically empty out. Such a sick fish. You know what else I love about this boat? They take such good care of their fish. They have two fish boxes. One of them is a brine box. So right now, Landon is bleeding them out. They go into a ice cold water slurry because a lot of these fish are super dense. Yes, 
So they go in here for eight hours. We do as deck hands. We do eight on, eight off. So we put them in here for the eight hour shift. When we switch shifts, we transform into this box, which is the actual main kill box, where we pack a nice layer of ice onto them, and that will just keep some fresh for you all when we get back to the dock. Not every day. Does that count? Does that count as one fish? That counts as a prize. You should go buy a lottery ticket after this one. Please, one big. You gotta play the lottery when you get back. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. oh my god. That is insane. insane. You have studs. Wag. Wagging the tail. Alright guys. Same time, huh? Talk to me a little bit. Golden tile. Thought it was small until it got a couple hundred feet off the bottom. Spade feet, Iowa Seaborg 300, in about 1,100 feet of water. Been on fire, man. How do you feel? <laughs> good. Tired, but good. <laughs> That's set. I don't know. Just move on. Watch your feet. Johnny with the off. Your second one on the trip. Look, Look at his eyeball, man. They're huge, right? Massive, yep. I mean, that's how they see down there. Yep. It's gotta be. That black pupil allows as much light in as possible. These real, real deep water fish all have these huge pupils. And it seems like they don't get barotrauma like they do no. like a group or two. Like his, not, his eyes aren't sticking out. Yeah. And he doesn't look bloated. Look at how huge but, his mouth is too. And these things are delicious. The nice thing about this experience is seeing so many different people catch their first. And first of many different species. You've had wahoo pot, snowy grouper, alfonsinos, barrel fish, all these different things. You got all these different people, all walks of life, all kind of working together as a team to just put fish in the boat. It's pretty tough and tricky to hook them in this deep water. And then keeping them glued for a thousand feet is another thing in itself. There's a fish, Dennis. Stayed glued this time, I think. Yep. So the bow of the boat just landed a big queen and Alfonsino. Fingers crossed. I want that Alfonsino so bad. There's a big, big golden tile looks like coming up. Big golden tile. So I got a little thumb dial on the reel here. And that's what controls the speed at which you bring them up. So if I want to completely stop it, I go like that. And then I could slowly ease into it. It's really good for getting the tent, getting tension in your line. And if you feel like he's trying to take line and you don't want to pull the hook, you know, you could just loosen up off of it. Let him fight. Big tile. Whoa. Big tile. Big, bro. Big. Nice. That's an incredible. Holy wow. smoke. That is huge. That, that's the biggest one of the trip. Whoa. <laughs> It's a golden. Golden tile! <laughs> look at these slobs. They look so cool just coming up, all blown up. As Johnny would say, dropping some space candy on their head. Ooh, a, a lovely space candy. Hey, and shout out to the mates here with the killer gaff shots on the boat. Headshots on them. These guys work real hard, make sure we got a nice, clean, ice down catch. These are such special fish, and look at them. They got these crazy little teeth. They'll oh, bite the heck out of you. And they will actually, they're perfectly built to bury in the sand. You can kind of see how his eyeballs are on the top of his head, because they will have half their body in the mud. His eyes are sitting there, and he's waiting for something oh, to come by and that, ambush him. two eyeballs sticking out. Yep. Call us his little dewlop. Such sick fish. Ian and Jerry said that this is probably going to be the last drift. We stopped fishing around 5 o'clock because they got to time the tides perfectly in the morning because this is such a big boat to get into the pass. So I think we got like 30 minutes left picking away at Rosie's. It was interesting to see, to see how as the day goes on you go from the queens in the morning, golden tiles, snowies, um, and now it's been like just straight rosy after rosy after rosy, which are great. And the, these are far bigger than the ones we catch back home. Delicious eating fish, but sometimes it can be frustrating to catch a fish this big when you know there's big golden tiles down there. Uh-oh, something grabbed my fish. I just got sharks. Let go! This thing is going straight down. 730, 740. 
Oh, I don't want to lose this jig. Oh! He let go. What the? What happened there? I must have been a porpoise. Or did something eat the jig? Something tried to eat the jig. That is very suspect. So, we got two possible theories of what happened to this fish. He's not really scared. I, he is kind of scaled. Either something tried to eat it, or something ate the jig that was attached to this fish, which is probably what happened, because you guys see that that bottom hook is cut off. If you guys have never seen, look inside that fish's mouth. It is jet black. And these are called black belly rosefish because right around here when you fillet them, they got this little patch of black, which you guys will see when we fillet these up at the fillet table. But Last drop, baby. This is the end of the fishing part. It's not the end. It's not the beginning. This is just the beginning of the end. Uh, uh. Come on, come on. That's just the most satisfying feeling is coming tight with that fish, knowing you fooled them into eating a giant hunk of metal on the bottom of the ocean floor. I live for that. Oh! So this is a good one. I'm not gonna mess around, this is a good fish. This is either a golden or a Alfonsino. This is not a black belly rose fish. Un unless it is the, the black belly rose fish. What if he's swimming with his pectins out like this and his mouth wide open? You know, everything's a possibility on this earth, but I don't think it's happening. <laughs> and if you guys are liking this video, give the video a thumbs up. I don't really ask for much. All I ask is you guys give this video a little thumbs up. It helps YouTube push it out so I can make better and better content for you guys. I think we both got golden tiles to end, the to end this trip, huh? Would be last drop of the day. That would be amazing. Look at this slab, boys! This is how I like to end my trip, right here! Holy Woo! Guys, wait till you see this thing. Yes, sir! Me and uh, Bob just doubled up, and I think Pete just hooked up, too, on the bottom. All right, guys, see you all. End of the day is turned out to be an absolute crush. We worked our way through all those uh, black, bell black belly rose fish, and the golden tiles just started firing off one after another. Johnny just got one. Ryan got one at the bow. 22, 22 pounds. <laughs> 22 pounds? Yeah. That's so sick. So I got about 140 feet left on mine. I can't think of a better way to end this trip than with these big old mud guppies. All right, another big one. Thanks. Ready, Johnny? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Tripled up on giant goldens. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That'll make a man happy right there. That's my biggest ever golden tile for oh, yeah, sure. Definitely. Biggest. All right, guys. What a better way to end the trip. As Ben said it, tiles and smiles. You can't beat it, man. Look at this. Stud golden tiles for the boys. The very end of the trip. Everyone got some quality fish. Variety of species. The brotherhood. The food. I can't think of a, I don't know, this boat is just amazing. You get stoked, man. You see everyone grinding the whole trip, and then, well, you know, when it pays off for the people that have been grinding, everyone gets happy. Everyone gets stoked, so it's just awesome, man. Jig on, boys. Jig on. Jig on. <laughs> up, 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 video! All day, catch this fish, bro. Someone Come on, someone Take him. Him. Yeah. Here, give me a hand. Real as fast as you can. As fast as you can. He's flying up.
Yeah, there you go, 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 go. Up, 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 up. Bro, he's burning. Hey, King, I'm trying to outrun us right now. We good? We good? Still on me? Dude, my right arm, I feel like a crap. Yeah. yeah. How was that? <laughs> you see what the fishermen do it's now? A, it's way easier to, to film <laughs> than cranking. That is by far the best way to end the trip. Golden tiles and wahoo. Very good. But this is a pretty pile of fish already. You got all the queens, looks like some scamps, black fins, and basically they just lay out this big tarp. You got the sunshade right here, and they just keep dumping ice and layers of fish and ice and fish and ice. And then all these tags that have these numbers, 19, 20, 18, whatever, whatnot, they'll call them out. You get all your coolers arranged in a circle here, and they'll just start throwing them at you into the cooler, and that's how all the fish is sorted, if you're wondering how you can keep track of all these fish for all these different people. Seven, ten, nine, sixteen, ten, ten. Got a nice two cooler full of fish. And I, I gotta stress this because I know that a lot of people are gonna comment, why are you guys keeping so many fish? We had 25 people fishing, including captains and mates, and they're also allowed to fish. It's not that much fish when you divide it. You gotta think, we're out at sea for two full days. I got a cooler full of fish. Some's going home with Dennis. Ryan's gonna share some fish with me. I'm gonna share some fish with him. He's got a girlfriend, his girlfriend's family, Brooke's family. I'd much rather be able to provide fresh, real organic fish for my dad than him have to go to Whole Foods or to Publix and buy it. Providing for your family, there's no shame in that. We all feel that way, absolutely. I bring this home more for my family who are way more into it. It's such a good feeling to be able to provide this. I hate to say it, but I'm a fresh fish. We all are fresh fish snobs. And unless it's this, we don't consider it to be fresh. The fish market isn't fresh. The supermarket certainly isn't fresh. So this is just a very zen, wonderful experience to be able to have the fun that we have and then take it and provide it to others who really appreciate it. Good job. That was well said. See, I'm not the only one who feels like that. That's just an unreal fishing trip. Yeah, it's the variety you can catch is pretty incredible in two days. Brian, yeah. you're down for the, the next American Patriot. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Three days straight of fishing? I don't know. So back in Pompano Beach, had the fish on ice for two days and check it out guys i'm a happy man because i got a cooler full of fish and different fillets like this right here this is a bag of queen snapper bag of tile fish there is some ham bone snapper as well as some rosie in there i got lots of bags and i'm going to be able to share it with my mom my dad brooks family neighbors um, still got some tunas and stuff to fillet but i got a yellow ice snapper on the table and you guys always see me talk about Dexter knives and the wide variety of knives. They make a knife for pretty much everything. This company has treated me so well over the last few years, so I gotta give love to where it's due. I've been using their knives for the last, I don't know, five or six years. You guys have seen it on video. I actually have a coupon code. You guys can save 20% off using my code Landshark on any of the knives. But for this little yellow eye snapper, I'm gonna use a seven inch soft grip knife. I like a small knife for a smaller fish like this because it gives me dexterity. So I just worked around the peck fin and the head meat. Gonna go from the head to the tail, knocking off those scales. And just going down memory lane, it is crazy to think how far we have come on the channel. And I would not be anywhere in my life without the support of all you guys watching. So seriously, thank you. Going on trips like the American Patriot, 
being able to employ someone like Dennis, um, you know, it's just a dream come true to see your dreams basically come true and it's all thanks to you guys. So yellow eye snapper, all filleted out right there. As you guys see, we gotta do a little carcass check. You know your boy Vic doesn't leave any meat on there. And take your time when you fillet fish because you know, we spent four days out at sea to catch all these. I want to have maximum yield. I want to treat the species with respect and try to get as much meat off of them as possible so that they wait, that way they don't die in vain. I got my mom from California who just moved here and she's not a big fish eater, but I'm going to change that with the power of fresh fish. So I'll see you guys in the kitchen. So I told you guys a little earlier that my mom just recently moved here from California. So I wanted to make her a really special dinner and get her to be a fish lover because her son catches fresh fish all the time. So you know I'm gonna try to supply her with all this good stuff. So we got the golden tile fish right here. And I wanna make the just juiciest, most flavorful fish for her. So I'm going to not bake it, but kind of grill it on the Camp Chef in parchment paper. So it's gonna seal in all those juices I already topped all of our golden tile fish with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and I made a compound butter. So softened butter, lime zest, lemon zest, ginger, garlic, coriander, just all these super aromatic things. And um, mixed it in with a little olive oil to give it some volume too, and make it a little more fluid. And we're gonna take our parchment paper and just put that compound butter on one side of our fish and we're gonna just gently seal this. So parchment paper, kind of like tin foil, you're gonna essentially steam your fish, but this is more porous than something like aluminum foil. So your fish is gonna have a chance to breathe and it's gonna be able to soak in the smoke from the smoker on the pellet grill out there. So I have them all neatly wrapped up in our parchment paper. We also got to catch some black from tuna on the trip and my little brother, I don't know how, my mom is not the fish person, but me and my little brother love fish. What better way to treat your little brother than some seared tuna? Slice it up and you guys see that outside edge is just barely cooked and that's what you want for seared tuna. Okay, and we're gonna top our seared tuna with some scallion. Aww. Look at you all dressed up. Yeah. Watch this, you're gonna learn how to fish and cook in Florida. So some sesame oil. Nice. Just a drizzle of sesame oil on our tuna. Sesame seeds. Mm-hmm. Sesame seeds. Beautiful. Yeah. What is this, Sam? Sriracha. You like sriracha? Never really have it, but I know you love it. For sure, I see it like all the time. Okay, a little sriracha. I would do spicy mayo, but we don't have any. I always love Duke's mayo. Yeah, Duke's mayo is good stuff. Okay, and now eel sauce. Eel sauce. Mm-hmm. Eel sauce is good. Eel sauce is what makes people who don't like sushi like sushi, like my mom. Okay. Brother, what is this? You said you've seen it in the video so many times. Oh, what is it? Camp Chef. Camp Chef. Camp Chef. Yeah, bro, you love this thing. I do love this thing. Got a side burner. See, he knows. I have the Camp Chef Apex. We're gonna use the pellet grill option tonight, so we're not doing gas. And I'm gonna go onto the grill grates, directly on with our parchment paper right here. So you wanna just leave it in the paper? Yep. So when I say that we're cooking it with the wood pellet, that's indirect heat. So it's like a smoker, right? Um, with wood pellets and so it should be, you, you kind of treat it like an oven. So 400 degrees on here is basically the same thing as indirect heat on an oven. 15 to 20 minutes. Then I'm guessing what you're gonna do next is probably uh, put that squash in here or something like, and you know, um, fry it or something. I yeah, guess. pan yeah. fry. Good job, brother. You excited? Uh, for food? Yeah. 
heck yeah, bro. I've been waiting for a long time. Now we pan roast our zucchini and squash. Special seasoning. You like the rice? Heck yeah. Sushi rice. Mm. Mm. You like it, Sammy? I love peanuts. How is it that you don't like any seafood and your two sons love seafood? It's really good, actually. It's my first time ever in, in how long I'm in United States for 27 years. Mm. And this is the first time I'm eating the raw fish. You're 10. I enjoy it. <laughs> That's amazing. I like it. I, if I could turn people on to fresh seafood, friends, family, it's just the power of fresh fish, man. That's what it is. So I took the zucchini and squash off the side burner, pan seared it. Look at that color. There's gonna be one delicious vegetable. It's like the, it looks like a steak. It's the perfect caramelization right there. So 15, 20 minutes-ish on the grill. And I can see all that butter melted and it's gonna be so delicious. My favorite part, we plate. So in here I got a parsnip and carrot puree. Watch it, how juicy this fish is gonna be. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, my goodness. oh yeah. Look at all that. Look at all that moisture that fish retained, huh? And then we have a little of our gremolata, which we're gonna just kind of sprinkle around. And cilantro, parsley, shallot, garlic. Olive oil. Golden tile fish is mm. so yeah, good. Sandy. Such a good fish. I'm so excited. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Dig in. Brother, yeah. your first real Florida fish. Okay, I want to see. see. You don't you don't even need a knife, it's that tender. I promise. Look at that flake. Oh, am I gonna be able to eat this with a fork? Oh my god. He was making that face before he even put it in his mouth. <laughs> All right, I'm not a taker. I just love fish. So do you like it? Oh, heck yeah. Did you try the fish, it. Dad? You saw. Mm -hmm. Did you try the fish? Yeah. So yeah. Good, juicy. This is the fish from our trip from last weekend. And I have a bag full for you. First bite of fish. Very delicious. The ginger on top is really refreshing. I haven't tried the parsnip stuff yet, but the fish is amazing. It's definitely cooked to perfection. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so happy because I got I got both my parents at the same dinner table once again. And I got two, Brooke, Samuel, my brother. So I'm a happy man. And I get to send my family home with a bunch of fish. And that's what this trip is about. It's so much more than the fishing. I get to share it with the people I love. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.